Hello students, welcome back to this session on electromagnetics or EMFT and today in this session we are going to talk about the circular cylindrical coordinate system. What is circular cylindrical coordinate system and why we are studying it? Okay, so we have already talked about the Cartesian coordinate system. If you have still not watched my previous video, I recommend you strongly to watch my previous video first where I discuss the Cartesian coordinate system so that you can relate it with the cylindrical coordinate system. Now, if I have the cylindrical type of objects, like the objects which are present here. So, these are all having the circular cylindrical symmetry. And if I have to denote each and every point of these objects, then I will be using the circular cylindrical coordinate system. So, now here we have three parameters, like we had x, y and z axis in the Cartesian coordinate system. Here we have rho, phi and z axis. What does it mean? Okay, so in x, y and z axis, if I had any point P, x, y, z, so I used to denote it with x, y and z coordinate. But in rho, phi, z, I denote it with rho, phi and z coordinate. Okay, so what does these things mean to me? So first of all, z. We all know z. z was there in the Cartesian coordinate system as well. So what is z? z denotes the height of the cylindrical object. So here we have two cylindrical objects. Both of them are differing in the height. So this is having less z. So here the z is less and here the z is more. So here these are differentiating based upon the height. Okay, now what is phi? Phi is the angle. Okay, azimuthal angle. The azimuthal angle is the angle which is made with the x-axis. So now, what does it represent? It represents what type of cylinder I have. Okay, so if it is a full cylinder, it will be denoting 2 pi phi. So phi is equal to 2 pi here. Okay, now if I am denoting this type of cylinder, here phi will be pi. It's a half cylinder. Now here can be phi can be anything which is arbitrary phi. So phi's range is varying from 0 to 2 pi. And what is height? Height was varying from minus infinity to infinity. Okay, and it is varying from 0 to 2 pi. And here I'll be having closed brackets. Okay, so close bracket or you can write it less than or equal to. Okay, so now here the third parameter is rho. Rho denotes the radius. Okay, so what does the radius means? If I have this object and this object, both are circular in nature, both are having same heights, both are having 2 pi phi. So here also and here also phi is 2 pi. But what is changing? Rho is changing. So we can completely represent every cylindrical object with the help of rho, phi and z. So now if I have to denote rho, what is rho? Rho is the radius. And how the radius can be changing? The radius can never be having the negative values. So it will be having values from 0 to infinity. So positive infinity only. Okay. It can never go in the negative side. So here if I denote it. So it is less than equal to 0. And it is less than equal less than infinity. So here I don't have equal sign. Okay. Now the next parameter is phi. Phi is azimuthal angle. I hope now you got the context of phi. What is phi and why it is required to denote any object. So okay, this is the range of phi. I hope there is no confusion in the range of phi now. So now z, z denotes the height. And what is the range of z? The range of z will be from minus infinity to infinity. So the range of z could be anything, height could be anything. It can go in the negative direction also. In the negative direction also, the, the range of z will be present. Okay, so I hope you got all of the things till now. So if I have to denote any point with the help of vector, so now in the cylindrical coordinate system, the point P can be denoted with. So what is rho? Rho is the first point, the radius. So radius will be having a rho unit vector. So we will denote it with the help of A rho unit vector. Like if I have point x, y, z, I used to denote it as x, ax plus y, ay plus z 
A Z. So this was the point P in the Cartesian coordinate system. Now here we'll be having rho A rho plus phi A phi plus Z A Z. So this represents my point P in the vector coordinate. So now if I need to find out the magnitude of the point P, it will be given as rho square plus phi square plus z square under root. So this is the magnitude of point P. Now we'll be seeing what is the relationship between the Cartesian coordinate system and the cylindrical coordinate system. So now z will be equal to z. So the first equation will be equal to z. So z is also z here and z is also z here. So there is no condition on z. z will be same in both Cartesian coordinate system as well as cylindrical coordinate system. Now if I talk about x, x will be given as rho cos phi. So from the triangle you can see this and now what is y? y is given as rho sin phi. So now if I divide these two equations, I will be getting so x upon y is equal to tan of phi. Now from here also you can see this. This is my angle phi. So this is the height. This is the base. So what will be the tan of phi? Height upon base. So it is y upon x. Sorry y upon x is equal to tan phi. So now if I denote the phi, so phi will be equal to tan inverse y upon x. So this is the first relationship between azimuthal angle and x and y coordinates. So now we'll be seeing the second relationship. So now from here, this is a right angle triangle and from here you can see the hypotenuse is rho and we'll be using the Pythagoras theorem. So rho square will be equal to here the base is x and height is y. So it will be equal to x square plus y square which means rho is equal to under root x square plus y square. So this is giving me the second relationship between the rho and the x and y coordinate. So I hope now you got it what is the relationship between x y coordinate and the rho. So this gives me from rho and phi how I can find x and y and if I know what is x and y how I can how I can find out rho and phi. So both of them can be interconverted into each other. Now we'll be seeing what is the dot product, what is the vector product. So like the same way I denoted in the Cartesian coordinate system, if I have the unit vectors along rho, phi and z axis. So now here if I talk about the dot product, so now a rho dot a rho is equal to a phi dot a phi is equal to a z dot a z will be equal to 1. And now if I take any other type of combination like a rho dot a phi is equal to a phi dot a z is equal to a z dot a rho is equal to 0 because the angle here is 90 degree here it is 90 degree and here it is 0 and the dot product we have the multiplication of their magnitude with the multiplication of cos of phi so here if i have cos of 0 it will be giving me 1 and here if i have cos of 90 it will be giving me 0 now coming to the cross product Now in the cross product, I will be having a rho cross a phi will be giving me a z a phi cross a a z will be giving me a rho and a z 
cross arrow will be giving me a phi and if I have the reverse of them I will be getting negative sign. So this will also be becoming uh, evident from the right hand thumb rule. So if I place my fingers rho and phi direction the direction of the thumb will give me the direction of the resultant. So I hope this thing is clear the same way I have did in the Cartesian coordinate system as well. Now we'll be seeing what is the relationship between the unit vectors a rho, a phi and az and ax, ay and az. So now if I have to denote it into the matrix form So now here we have to find out the relationship between AX, AY and AZ with A rho, A phi and AZ. So here I'll be having 3 cross 3 matrix which is multiplied with A rho, A phi and AZ. So this matrix when multiplied will be giving me the relationship between the unit vectors. Okay, so both of them are unit vectors. Now X and rho are related. X and rho are related with the cos of phi. So this is the column of A rho. This is the column of A phi and this is the column of AZ. So now how X and rho are related will give me the term in the A rho column. So here X and rho are related with cos of phi. So here I'll be putting cos of phi. I hope this thing is clear. Now how y and rho are related with the help of sine of phi. So here I'll be getting sine of phi. So z is not related to rho. So here I can directly put 0. So I hope this thing is clear. Now we'll move toward the a rho. So if I have to find out a rho. So I will be differentiating this term with the a rho. So I need to find out del by del rho of cos of phi. I know it is minus sine of phi. Okay. So now del by del rho. differentiating it in the terms of phi. So del by del phi of cos of phi is equal to minus sine of phi. I know that so here I will be putting minus sine of phi. Again del by del phi of sine of phi. So sine of phi will give me cos of phi. So differentiating this I will get the cos of phi and 0 will give me 0. Now again in the z direction I have to differentiate it in the terms of z. So del by del z of minus sin phi will give me 0. Okay. So here I can put 0. Here also I can put 0. Now z is directly dependent upon z. So here I put 1. Okay, so I hope this matrix is clear and this is how I can find out the relationship between the two unit vectors. So like for example, if I need to find out what is the relationship between AX, A rho and A phi. So what I'll be doing, I will be multiplying it. So here AX will be equal to A rho cos phi minus A phi sin of phi. Now what is A y? Ay will be equal to A rho sin of phi plus A phi cos of phi. Okay and Az will be directly equal to Az. Now if I need to find out the reverse of the relationship. So if I need to find out what is A rho A phi and Az in the terms of Ax, Ay and Az. So what I can do? I can take this matrix this side. So if I take this matrix this side. So here I will be having inverse of this matrix. So here I will be having. So I am denoting it. It's inverse. Now here I will be having A rho, A phi. Sorry Ax, Ay and Az. So this is the inverse relationship. Now I need to find out the inverse of this matrix. So I am telling you how directly you can find out this. 
so now you need to convert every column into row so this column will be converted into row first column into first row second column into second row third column into third row so here i'll be having cos of phi sin of phi 0 minus sin of phi cos of phi 0 and 0 0 1 and it is multiplied with ax ay az now from here again we can find out the relationship between a rho ax ay and az so a rho will be given as ax cos of phi plus ay sin of phi and a phi will be given as ay minus ay sin of phi plus sorry ax sin of phi plus a y cos of phi a z will be directly equal to a z. So these are the various relationship between the cylindrical coordinate system and the Cartesian coordinate system. So here I'll be concluding my session. I hope you understood each and everything. If still you have any doubt, you can put the doubt in the comment and I will try to resolve it as soon as possible. I hope you like this video. If you like it, share it with your friends, subscribe the channel and also push the like button. Thank you so much.